Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emacs. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our module presentation discussing the benefits of the MC Emacs and utilizing the six fault zone approach to analyzing your electric motors. Today, specifically, we're going to focus on the rotor fault zone. But before we get going, let's talk a little bit about PDMA Corporation. We manufacture the Emacs for dynamic testing the MCE for static testing, and we've combined both online and offline technologies into one highly accurate field portable technology called the MCE Max. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we use the six fault zone approach to analyzing your electric motors, and those are power quality, power circuit, insulation, rotor, air gap, and stator. And today, specifically, we're going to focus on our rotor fault zone. Now, if you've listened to me in previous modules, you'll know we discussed the EPRI GE study in which essentially 10% of your motor failures can be attributed to rotor bar problems. So regardless of the type of motor, the open bar design or cast aluminum design, MCE Max with the MCE and E Max uses comprehensive data to determine the severity of the rotor condition and we can trend that information over time. And our job obviously is to alert you to the condition as it occurs and then trend that as it, uh, as it progressively uh, may get worse. Now some of the problems that can occur inside of the rotor. Well, we just discussed this, cracked or broken rotor bars. Porosity, uh, porosity in, sp in the cast aluminum design, defective rotor iron, or lamination damage. And these broken bars or porosity or the, the problems that can occur create heat or high temperatures and a subsequent loss of torque. So it's important that we monitor the rotor, make sure it's healthy, and that it's uh, operating in a good, stable uh, condition. Now, PDMA, you, in, as you can see here with our Emacs, uses a spectral analysis approach. And spectral analysis allows us to take a simple current signal and apply a FFT, or Fast Fourier Transformer, algorithm. FFT capability reveals small but very informative frequencies like pull pass frequency. And in this case here, we have an X on our pull pass frequency and you can see PDMA puts in our observe line, or our caution line, or our severe line. So as the problem gets worse, or if you have a single cracked bar or multiple cracked bars, you'll start to see this pull pass frequency develop more energy and, and stick out from the baseline or the noise level of the spectrum. We don't want to stop there. We want to utilize every tool available in the Emacs and we go out to 480 hertz, which allows us to use our swirl or look at our fifth harmonic. And the fifth harmonic is essentially a phase shift in the air gap flux on the rotor. This creates around the fifth harmonic our, full, our pull pass frequencies. And so we monitor for them. We also utilize demodulation and that essentially filters out our 60 hertz signal. And what's left behind are mechanical anomalies or mechanical energies uh, in the demodulation spectrum. We can also utilize this for very accurate two-pole uh, rotor bar analysis. We can use our inrush startup current, which is monitoring the most stressful time of the motor. And for MCE, we look at our, our rotor influence check. Now, as we discussed, inrush startup, or the most uh, uh, stressful time for a motor, which can see essentially maybe seven to ten times the normal full load amps at startup. And in this case here, we can see the motor starting up, and as it goes through a startup process, it goes to 39 seconds and it basically fails. Well, why did that happen? Well, in this case, troubleshooting found out that if we just adjusted the time delay relay another second for a, a longer start time, and if we went out to 40 seconds, we can see that that motor is now running uh, correctly. But we can also use inrush startup current to monitor uh, the, the a process analysis. So if you have a process that you want to look at for 60 seconds 
Uh, essentially, we're just taking a current sample, and you can monitor that process over that 60 seconds, maybe a motor-operated valve or something of that, uh, making sure that the events, when they're designed to happen, actually do happen based on the current that it's drawing. And you can look at if a motor takes maybe a little bit longer or shorter to start up, that could be uh, also attributed to rotor bar anomalies or load changes. The MCE portion of our, of our MCE Max uses a, uh, essentially a graphical, provides us uh, with this rotor influence check, which is a graphical representation of the magnetic coupling between the rotor and the stator. The residual magnetism of the rotor interacts with the high frequency signal applied to the stator. So essentially what are we doing here? This is what we're doing is we're taking the rotor, we're applying a high frequency 1200 hertz signal to the stator, developing a field on the stator, and we have the residual field on the rotor, and as we rotate the rotor through this field, and depending on the number of poles, it would either be in 5 degree or 10 degree increments or less than that if it's a higher number of poles. What we then do is we measure out inductance over that period. And if we do have anomalies, what we like to see is if that, that rotor, as it interacts with the stator field, consistency, essentially in the same places on all three phases. And as you can see here, we do see that. So that would be indicative of a potential rotor bar anomaly inside this motor. We also plot out average inductance. And if we do see average inductance going up over time, that could also be indicative of a rotor bar anomaly. The rotor influence check is an excellent baseline test and it can be used in correlation with our Emax testing, the inrush startup or the current signature analysis, uh, swirl, uh, or demodulation, as we mentioned earlier. And you can correlate now from an offline and an online perspective and determine if uh, the rotor has some issues with it. Before we decide to ro remove the rotor, we want to know a couple of things, obviously. What's the condition that this motor sees? Is it, is it in a constantly running and stopping environment? Or is it running steady state? These are some of the questions that you want to ask before you determine, do we need to remove this rotor? Is it an open bar design or a spun cast, uh, cast aluminum design? Uh, those uh, matter greatly because if it is an open bar and you develop a crack in a bar or the bar flings out, it could interact with the stator and that could be negative for the stator, obviously. So some things that you want to think of before you, as you're analyzing the rotor uh, fault zone. I'd like to thank you for your time. If you have any more questions or you require further information, please contact PDMA at pdma at pdma.com or 813-621-6463, extension 118. Once again, thank you. I look forward to seeing you real soon.